As your middle age, middle manager in middle America in a midlife crisis, the new Apple TV series Severance hits really close to home. I've finally had a chance to watch the first four episodes, and I gotta say, I'm hooked. If you're a fan of the channel, you know that I love a show with a mystery that we can theorize about week to week, and this show definitely fits the bill. In this video, I'm going to talk about some of the themes we saw in the first four episodes and give my theories about what I think is really going on at Lumen. As always, I'm probably way off, but spoiler warning in case I happen to get something right. And I apologize in advance if I jump all over the place, this show has my head spinning. So grab a Lumen brand coffee and group up those scary numbers because away we go. The show starts with a woman lying on a conference room table with no memory of who she is or how she got there. All we hear is a disembodied voice trying to give her a survey. I love this scene, and it immediately hooked me on the show. And then they follow it up with Mark Scout crying in his car in the Lumen parking lot. We see him move through the giant lobby, right by the enormous head of Lumen's current CEO, James Egan, which we don't know at the time. We see him put his personal items in a drawer and switch them out for very plain items before getting in an elevator. Halfway down, we see his demeanor change, and he even throws away the tissue he wiped his teary eyes with, seeming to not know why he even had it. This whole walk down the hallway was brilliant and totally accomplished what television and movies should always do, but usually don't, show, don't tell. The whole show, including the severance procedure itself, is such a great metaphor for how we are two different people at work and at home. I've worked in many offices, and it isn't much different than working on the severed floor of Lumen. There are people I spend most of my day with, and laugh with, and eat with, but I know absolutely nothing about them outside of work. I've had co-workers who left the company, and all you get is an email saying they enjoyed working together, and then you never see them again. And some are even just gone, and you never know why, and you never talk to them again, just like with Mark and Petey. The first and probably biggest mystery on the show is what they actually do at Lumen. The main group we meet works in a division called Macro Data Refinement, an awesomely vague name. Their job consists of grouping numbers that give them different feelings and tossing them into electric bins. To me, it feels like they are glorified paper shredders, but I have a feeling it's something very different. First of all, they see only numbers, but with an implant in their brains, could what's really on the screen be very different? Maybe their subconscious brain sees the real images, which could be super scary stuff that their company is involved in or has done to people, but their severed work brains only see scary numbers. Or are they a part of some large human experiment? Or both? Things are definitely not as they appear, as we learned when Irv started to see this black sludge cover his cubicle and desk. The implants are definitely messy with their minds, more than just spatially separating their memories. Oh, and if the implant can separate work memories from out-of-work memories, why can't it separate memories in other parts of their lives? They live in housing owned by Lumen. Are there other sensors there that mess with their heads? We've already seen that Mark's boss is spying on him and plays two totally separate personalities, probably so his brain doesn't catch on. Is she doing this because the company has asked her to so he'll be more productive? Or do they have some personal connection? We've seen that this character, whose Audi goes by Mrs. Selvig, and whose Innie is Harmony, can be pretty ruthless, since she was willing to drill into dead Petey's skull during his funeral to retrieve his implant. Speaking of Petey, I'm super curious about his map of the Lumen severed floor, particularly the houses and the coil of doom. We were told that there may be severed people at Lumen who are never allowed to leave. Do they live in these houses? This may actually not be as bad as it sounds. We are seeing a battle between Helly's Innie and her Audi. Maybe the ones that never leave are Innies who decided to kill off their Audis for good by never leaving work. Are we going to see that there are innies living full lives on the inside, completely cutting off their Audi? This is one of the coolest parts of the show, the bifurcation of the individuals. They are really becoming two separate people. We saw this as Petey started to have each side of him come back together and his brain couldn't handle it. We see evidence of the Audi life on the innie people like Irv's dirty nails. They even fantasize about what their Audi's lives are like. By the way, what is up with Irv's nails? 
Is he a killer on the outside? Is he a gardener? They seem to be establishing Irv as gay, based on his interactions with Bert from Optics and Design, but I have no idea. The sludge we saw covering Irv's desk could be symbolic of the two sides of his personality merging, or even worse, his mind literally melting. At the end of episode 4, we saw that Mark's Audi's pain is staying with his innie as he molded the tree his wife's car crashed into when she died. Was that because Harmony planted Mark's wife's candle? Or is it happening anyway? It feels like Mark is a pet project of Harmony's, like it's all part of some research project. A long time ago, I read a book by theorist Julian Jaynes called The Origin of Consciousness and the Breakdown of the Bicameral Mind. Besides just leaving this by my bed so I look smart, it was also a really great read. Jaynes theorized that early man was not conscious like we are. Early man could not be introspective like we are today. They did not realize that their inner thoughts or inner voice were actually them. He said this is the reason there are accounts of humans talking to gods long ago, because they were actually hearing their own inner voice as a completely separate person. I feel like the severance procedure reintroduces the bicameral mind. I believe this is evidenced by the break room procedure. During this obvious conditioning activity, at some point they start to hear something from behind a door. Helly thought she heard people talking, while Dylan said he heard a crying baby. I think that this is their inner voice, or their Audi, while they are at work trying to reach them. Or it could just be a group of people from behind a door who are spying on them like they're at a zoo. Out of all of this, the big question is, what does Lumen really want? It's a company that passes down from generation to generation because the best way to keep secrets is to keep it in the family. I have an early theory that Heli is actually related to the line of Egan's. That's why she is so intent on keeping her innie working and doesn't even view her as a real person. But my initial guess as to what Lumen wants is they are looking to create voluntary slave labor by finding broken down people and offering them a full-time reprieve from the pain through structure and mindless work. They want the innies to disassociate completely from their outies so they never want to leave work. Even as I'm saying this, I feel like I'm incorrect, but I'm super excited to see where things are really headed. I would love to hear your theories on the show in the comments, and I'll pick a couple of them and explore them in a future video while giving you guys a shout out. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like. I appreciate all of you for watching. Once again, I'm Brett the Middleman, and I'll see you next time.